So finally, we have a main event for UFC 300. Alex Pajeda will take on Jamal Hill from that light heavyweight strap. And I can't wait for this matchup. It's actually a really sick fight and you should be hyped for it too. Now, let me preface with this real quick. Is this the fight that Dana White promised? Is this a super amazing, can't believe it type matchup? No, it's not. It's not what Dana White promised. It's not what we were expecting in the terms of excitement value. And if I'm being totally honest with you, this fight is better well served on UFC 301 on the Brazil card, not at UFC 300. The UFC and Dana White, they messed this up. Dana White was on podcast after podcast, hyping up this matchup, saying it's going to be the biggest thing ever that's going to blow our socks off. And guess what? My socks are still on. I'm still nice and cozy sitting here making this video. It just simply doesn't meet the expectations that Dana White and the UFC set upon us. We were expecting two new weight divisions. We were expecting some crazy comeback like Habib coming back, maybe even somebody else, I don't know. We were expecting maybe a Islam jumping up to fight Edwards for that 170 belt. There were so many opportunities for the UFC and they were feeding us all of this information that was supposed to hype us up for this big main event and we get Jamal Hill versus Alex Pajeda, which is a great fight. Do not get me wrong. This is a sick fight. I can't wait for it. But is it this super crazy main event? No, it's not. And I don't really understand why the UFC is like, oh my God, this is a crazy fight. When in all reality, this fight could have headlined any other pay-per-view. You can put Alex Pajeda versus Jamal Hill on 301, 302, 298, 299. You can pretty much put it on any other card and it will be a good main event. But is this a UFC 300 level main event? It's not, simply that. And I really can't be mad at anybody else who was let down by this fight being announced. If you expected an absolute crazy fight, you're right, you were in the right for this. I mean, I can find a plethora of Dana White quotes of him detailing how amazing this main event's going to be. But you know what? That doesn't even make me upset. What I'm really truly mad about is the fact that they milked the hell out of this. With the whole Dana White oil em up meme with Nina Drama on there on Twitter saying, Dana White, you have till tomorrow night to announce UFC 300. That simply just is them taking advantage of our hype of our fandom, and it's stupid, man. I didn't wanna wait till 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I know people in the UK are waiting up till 6 a.m., waiting for a Dana White announcement, and then that shit never comes. So when Nina Drama is on Twitter saying that Dana White's gonna have a huge announcement for 300 tomorrow, and then it never comes, you're just wasting people's time. You're wasting my time. You're wasting every single other fan's time. And I really do feel bad for the guys in Europe right now, bro, because they were up all night waiting for Dana White's announcement. That never comes, and you just lost a bunch of sleep because of it. Now your sleep schedule is in the gutter because Dana White wanted to milk you for content, pretty much. That's just tough, and you have to deal with it because you're a UFC fan. This is one of the I guess negatives of being a fan of the UFC is the fact that you have to wait till 12 a.m. And I'm on the East Coast. 12 a.m. is still pretty late. But if you're anywhere else, you have to wait till later just to hear an announcement, which is so dumb. And the UFC, I heard MMA Guru talk about this, and I'm going to kind of piggyback off of that. The fact that they announced this fight after Ilya Teporia just flatline KO'd Volk just tells you how much they were trying to hide this shit. They really didn't want this to be huge breaking news. They announced it pretty much almost immediately after the fight, and I think in the post-fight press conference, they wanted this to fly under the radar that nobody would notice, and maybe in a couple days when all the Volk fans finally come out of their room from their depression state, they see this news and now they're hype again. They really just tried to sneak it in there like we wouldn't notice it. All that hype, all that waiting that we just did, just for you to sneak it in, feels like a slap in the face. UFC 300 is supposed to be the UFC's biggest card of all time, and you just sneak in the main event because you know it's subpar and not what it's supposed to be. That's absolute blasphemy to me. We deserve a better main event, but you know what? I'm still happy with the card. I'm still going to enjoy this card. I think it's an amazing card. Could we have had a better main event? For sure, but you know what? I'm still very satisfied with the UFC 300. I know I complained a long time ago or in some past videos of mine, but you know what? I went through the card again. I looked at every single fight on it and I'm happy with it, man. I'm hyped for the card. Are there some fights on the card that I'd rather see not be on there like Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison? For sure, but you know what? You have to be inclusive. You have to have some women's fights on there because otherwise that would be 
not the best. I actually really don't mind Marina Rodriguez versus Jessica Andrade. That can be a sick women's fight. Am I going to love it? Am I going to be hyped for it? no but if you are going to put a women's fight on there that isn't a title fight that fight has the most potential to be a banger at least like to have some war back and forth moments they're going to scrap it out so again am i excited for it no way but it does have potential to be an underrated fight i guess so there's some leeway there for the ufc and me but i guess moving on let's talk about the main event let's talk about alex Bejeda versus jamal hill and let me give my early prediction of who i think will win and I'm really teeter-tottering back and forth between who I think will win this. I think that Alex Bejeda has a ton of holes in his game. And I think Jamal Hill is that style that can put out Alex Bejeda's lights. Let's be honest here. I feel like Alex Bejeda's biggest issue right now is like a simple one-two down the pipe. He gets cracked with straight shots so easily. Now, I haven't done any research for this fight yet, so I'm going to have to go back and watch a few of Alex Bejeda's fight before I give my official prediction. But... I'm leaning Jamal Hill right now. I think Jamal Hill, he has a really nasty one-two. He's really rangy. And I think he might catch Alex Beda on the chin, whose chin has also been kind of sus in the past. I mean, is Adesanya flatline KOing you? Not a great look. I think Jamal Hill has more power than Adesanya. And I think his style is more suited to beat a guy like Pajeda. But the issue with Jamal Hill is the fact that He's coming back a bit early, isn't he? He tore his Achilles, I forget what month last year, but he tore his Achilles not too long ago, man. And before that, he was looking pretty, you know, big, if you know what I mean. Bro put on a few extra pounds in the belly, and I don't know if we're going to get a 100% Jamal Hill for this fight. He's obviously getting a bag for this, getting a pay raise to take this matchup on short notice pretty much, or what I mean is shorter than expected. I think Jamal Hill had a plan to come back probably months ahead of now not for 300 and when you've been out for so long he can't really train legs at all because he tore his achilles and you're fighting a guy who has made his signature move leg kicks alex Bejeda has won so many fights just by purely being a good leg kicker and you're fighting a guy who has been able to train legs in forever who's coming back earlier than expected maybe he might get his legs chewed up. We might see Jamal Hill get leg kicked TKO'd. That's what worries me. If Jamal Hill was fully healthy, if we saw a pre-Achilles tear Jamal Hill, I would be super confident in taking him over Alex Pajeda, but him coming back from injury just really puts a stinky in my mind, and I can't get it out of there. But I can't give an official prediction just yet. I have to you know why again watch some fights back do some research on this really try to figure out why Pajeda is so susceptible to the one two down the pipe or straight shots down the middle I have to figure out why that is and I don't know the why just yet I have to watch some fights back to figure out why exactly that happens but yeah that's pretty much it let me know how you feel in the comment section are you happy with this main event do you dislike this main event how do you feel about it overall but with that being said I'm out of here guys like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications. Peace.